Remove background. In Comfy UI can be easy and more beautiful than before. Hello everyone, this is another Comfy UI custom node specifically designed for background removal. It implements InspireNet, which is claimed to be the best method to date for removing backgrounds. It is very easy to install, and I have not installed it before this video recording. So we will go through this together. I saw that the author of this custom note has done some comparisons with other background removal methods, such as using SAM and U2Net, which we are familiar with. I will try to use this one and do a side-by-side -side comparison workflow with other background removal methods. You guys can compare which one is the best suitable for you in all kinds of image or video situations to remove backgrounds. So let's get started in Comfy UI. First, we are going to click on the Comfy UI Manager, where we will find the Custom Nodes Manager. Click in here to find the Custom Nodes, then paste this name into the search box. It's very fast, and you will see the results appear. Click Install. From what I saw, the installation is very easy and simple. Just search for this name, install it, and it's done. The first time you load the custom nodes, it will download the pre-trained models, which might take some time. So, after the installation is complete, we click Restart and wait for the new custom nodes to appear. After the configuration restart, we have the new custom nodes for background removal. Let's search for the name of this. You can type the name InspireNet. Then it will appear as the custom node name itself with remove background in short terms behind it. Click this and you will see the custom nodes for background removal. There's no touch script in the drop down menu, so I would choose the default features and settings. Of course, at the input image parameters, we have to load an image. And then at the end, on the output, we have the image and the mask output as well. It's pretty clear, like the other background removal custom nodes that we have. Then let's try this one. We will use the same image and implement the other background removal methods that we usually use for workflow. We will do a side-by-side -side comparison with that as well. For the output, I will do an image preview for this one. And we will also have the mask preview. So we are using the Comfy UI Essentials custom node pack. There's a mask preview node here. We can use that just like an image preview. Now we'll do this on the side and choose another image for this example right here. Okay, I have loaded an image. This is one of the AI generated images of a female sitting in a coffee shop, something like that. Let's try the first run and see how this works. Of course, the first time we run this, it will take some time to load the models, but then it works pretty fast. As you can see, we have the object, which is the main character, appearing and the whole background is removed very smoothly. Even the hair, the tiny little parts on the side here, remain with the main character. It can identify the hair as part of the main character, and even some hair on the left side. It does not chop off the hair, unlike some other basic or older background removal methods that usually chop off the hair, making it look less appealing. If that happens, we can compare both images to see the difference. We have image A, representing the removed background image, and image B, the original image. As you can see, it's removing the background very smoothly, especially around the hair, which is very important. Between the hair, there are some gaps, and it can remove the background very smoothly, even around the clothing. You can see the legs here, underneath the dress, are also removed smoothly, keeping the whole character as an object without chopping off any parts. When using some older methods like mask removal, sometimes it removes parts of the clothing that are in between spaces or doesn't keep the clothing as a complete object. So there you have it. This is another one. We can try using other background removal methods for a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, I have a total of four background removal method custom nodes in my system, and I have mapped them together in this workflow for a side-by-side -side comparison. First, we have the Remove Backgrounds from Comfy UI Essentials. This uses the U2Net general purpose model running with CPU. As you can see, there is some loss of hair on the side. 
there is some loss and between the gap of the hair and the character itself, we have some space gaps where it won't be able to remove those backgrounds. Also, the gap between the jacket here is not able to detect the blue area of the jacket sleeve, leaving the background from the original image still visible. The second one we see is the remove backgrounds from MTB nodes, which uses alpha mapping. Again, as you can see, there's some hair flying on the side. This one's even worse, totally cutting off those hairs on the side. Some parts are even lost. The character's jacket part, especially the sleeve, has some background remaining in the space between the jacket. And some parts of the dress are not removed well, leaving some outline of the dress. That is not good for what we expect from background removal. Lastly, we see the Woznode Suite background removal custom node that uses U2Net. We have some other models here as well to try out, but basically it gives almost the same result. Again, the hair does not remain the same as in the original image. The space gap between the hair and the body is not removed smoothly. The sleeve here won't be able to remove the blue area, and the dress underneath still shows some background color from the original image. So, yep, this might look okay for not a close up shot, but if you look closely, it won't be that good. I usually use the Comfy UI Essentials for removing backgrounds and keeping the character's objects intact for outfits in the IP adapter. And this worked well before because we had black color backgrounds when getting the output from these custom nodes. But if you are working with a high quality image and need to retain very detailed features of your character, then this background removal method won't achieve that goal. The new method we have here is pretty nice. First of all, the jacket sleeve here can have those blue color areas removed. Secondly, a lot of hair from the original image is retained. As we can see, there's lots of hair flying out on the left and right sides, and it still manages to keep those hairs from the character itself. The gaps between each hair are also accounted for, as this part can remove those background colors. One last thing to note is the dress. Although the outline still remains on the dress underneath, it looks smoother compared to what we see with other background removal models. So far I like this new background removal custom node. For some people doing AI videos or AI movies, sometimes you need to remove the background and keep the characters, which usually adding a green backdrop like in movie productions. There's a better method to do that by using the InspireNet background removal. I have another workflow for background removal and putting the green screen job on top of that. Here's another method I have used before, which involves segment anything node. This method can create a mask for an object and use another technique to remove the masked background and replace it with an object. This was a previous way to remove backgrounds and add a green screen for animations. I've adjusted this a bit to show you how it works conceptually with just an image, but as you can see, it's not that great for background removal with this method, there are always some glitches and errors. So what I did is change this method. Instead, we will use the new InspireNet background removal. We will try this one as well. At this moment, we don't need the segmentation method, so we'll put it aside. We will use the new InspireNet image to remove the background and replace the previous one. Let's see how the results go. Okay, we did that already. As you can see, we have retained the hair after background removal and on the side as well. Some parts of the dress look pretty nice. We can keep the original character as it is after background removal. If you want to do even better, you can set the mask kernel size to 1 which will make the outlines sharper on each little part, making all elements more defined. And that's how you do background removal. For this custom node group, it removes backgrounds from my existing workflow that I used for Mimic Motions. 
I have also used this custom node group for anime diff creating animations as well. It's pretty handy. All you do is input the image and then you get the output. The only thing I changed this time is using this method for background removal instead of using the segment anything method. However, segmentation can sometimes be advantageous when you're not dealing with human characters. If you have an animal, a coffee cup, or even a table, you can use segmentation to prompt a mask for that specific object. So there isn't just one method to do it all. We have to deal with different situations. Sometimes this is what makes AI flexible and adaptable to different scenarios. I hope this inspires you and I will see you in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.